Hi everyone, my name is Rachel Weaver. I am on faculty and staff at Lighthouse Writers Workshop. Jenny Shank and I have been making a series of videos in which Jenny tells us about a new book. Jenny has been reviewing books professionally for a long time for publications such as the LA Times, Rocky Mountain News, High Country News, Minneapolis Star Review, Star Tribune. <laughs> um, what else? Dallas Morning News. Did I forget any, Jenny? There's lots, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna turn it over. I just try to find another newspaper. Uh -huh. I'm gonna turn it over to you and let you talk about our next book here. Okay, so today I wanted to talk about uh, Lydia Yukonovich's new story collection, Verge. Um, Lydia Yukonovich is pissed. That's what I derived from this story collection. Um, I was, I, this came out uh, in February, just before all the lockdowns happened. And a few weeks ago, I was reading this article in the New York Times by Frank Rooney, and he was interviewing um, Lori Garrett, who is a Pulitzer Prize winning science journalist. And she's been writing about the potential for um, pandemics to disrupt society for a really long time. She published this book called The Coming Plague in 1994. So um, lots of people are consulting with her to see like what she predicts next because so many of her predictions have come true. And um, her next prediction for this current pandemic um, is that if somehow the wealthiest people in our society um, get even wealthier or just come out completely unscathed while the rest of us are suffering and losing our jobs and all that, um, she said, we may see what collective rage looks like. So that's like the futurist's prediction for that. And then I thought this book kind of perfectly encapsulates that, even though it was published just before all this happened. Um, I feel like she was tapping into this like rage bubbling up underneath things. Um, she writes about marginalized people, uh, refugees, migrants, junkies, prostitutes, people in prison. Um, and a lot of her characters are people that more powerful people have preyed on um, trafficking them or using them for, for different things. And, um, but they're not weak characters, these people that have been preyed on. They're, they're starting to get angry and they're gonna bust out. You just have this feeling. <laughs> Eventually it's gonna, it's gonna bust out. Um, my favorite story is probably the one called, it's called Streetwalker. And it's set in this neighborhood I thought of it as being in Portland because that's where she's from, but um, it's a neighborhood that used to be pretty seedy and now it's gentrifying. And um, the, the narrator and her husband are ex junkies, but now they're like respectable people, like teachers and artists. And, but they always, they kind of have a sympathy for the old life that they used to be in. And the neighborhood as it's changing is forming like a neighborhood watch to, chase the junkies away. And there's this one particular, um, this one particular couple that the narrator is really concerned about. It's, it's two junkies, a man and a woman. And what they do is like, he sells the woman for whatever people want to do to her. And then they get to take the money and um, buy drugs. And she decides, because she kind of sympathizes with them for when she was using drugs, she decides she's going to buy a, an hour of this woman's time just let her sit in her couch and just have an hour. And, and, it, and, it, and it's really great because it, it kind of, um, it burrows into that do-goodery impulse that some of us have, thinking that we can make a real change in someone's life by, by doing something like that. And as you read the story, you'll see, you know, it's not quite that simple. Um, I wanted to just read a little bit from this. Um, it really, it really portrays how, even though the, the narrator couple were, are no longer addicts, there's always like an attraction or a fear of like being pulled back into it and kind of an identification with the more the underside of things than the respectable people. So here's our narrator. narrator. I am in the living room drinking Pinot. My husband is in his pretend studio painting. She's been gone a week. That's the lady that she paid for an hour of her time. I am watching TV, trying to recognize something. Then through the window, 
I hear the murmur of low voices just out of range, the neighborhood watch. I turn from the images on the TV to the image of the walkers. They've all purchased some kind of day glow vests, matching orange caps, Nikes that glow like lowly beacons with every step. Their flashlights swing back and forth with exaggerated purpose. Women with children are packed into the middle of the group, men on the outside. They do not look afraid. They are perfect in their movements, synchronized, brutal. They will cover maybe five blocks north and south and five east and west, manifest destiny. I can feel wine bile rising up in my throat. I'm about to go get my husband so we can wash them together, so I can puff off and judge them from inside my house. And then it goes on from there and one of them spits on her lawn. She's a junkie or <laughs> invited them into the neighborhood or whatever. Um, so it's really, it's cool. It's like dark and twisted and the stories take kind of turns that you don't, you don't expect. Um, as a writing teacher, I appreciated some things about this. They're different, they're written in a different way than I usually write and teach. Like for example, they don't have a lot of direct dialogue it's more like indirect dialogue and it gives it kind of like a folkloric feel or like a fairy tale feel sometimes. Um, the other thing that's different from the usual advice about story writing um, is that sometimes there's a lot of just direct writing about what these characters think about things. Some of it is rants, like it's more telling <laughs> than showing. And um, I don't know, maybe we're in the mood for some ranting and telling right now more than, more than showing all the time. Um, and yeah, so I think if you're looking for uh, stories that are a jolt and are surprising, you should check out Verge by Lydia Yukinovich. Thanks, Jenny. Yeah, thank you.